and I'm not about to cry, okay? Because your, your girl's strong, okay? So, we ain't doing it today. Heart disease is a killer. You wish you was dead, okay? So, hey, so I'm back with another video. Good morning. It's morning for me. It's really early in the morning. I did not want to get up. But I have to go to class. It's my first last day of the semester. So I guess I should be a little bit more excited. But I'm not. I did not want to get up. I kept telling myself, like, don't get up. We'll make an excuse. But, you know, we got to finish this semester off strong. You know? Hey, my lovely. So I'm back with another video. So this is going to be, like, you know, a get ready with me. While I talk about, like, what it's like living with lupus. How it affects my life in many different aspects. But I just want to get started. So if you don't know what lupus is, it's an inflammatory disease when the immune system attacks its own tissue. I have the worst kind of my disease. Lupus, S-L-E. So what this is, it, it can affect your joints, skin, kidneys, blood cells, brain, heart, and your lungs. The symptoms can vary, but can include fatigue, joint pain, rash, fever, and these can periodically get worse and then improve. Ooh, that is what you call a flare-up when it gets worse. While there's no cure for lupus, Current treatments focus on improving quality of life through controlling symptoms and minimizing flare-ups. They do these things by telling you to wear sun protection, diet, and they give you medication such as anti-inflammatory and steroids. So now that you know like the medical definition, I'm gonna get into my definition because listen, I just now started to really like learn about my disease when i first first initially found out i was 16 years old i'm gonna be honest when i first found out i was really young i was like i don't have cancer that's all that mattered to me is just that i wasn't gonna die but to be honest with you like as i live with this i would have rather died like i know that sounds like you know mad insensitive and you know like just mad messed up but nobody knows what it's like and I'm not about to climb, okay? Because your, your girl's strong, okay? So, mm, we ain't doing it today. But living with that disease is a killer. You wish you was dead, okay? So, to me, it's not that much of a relief that I don't have cancer because it's kill it still feels like it's killing you every single day. It's like a slow, painful death that you just never know when it's going to come. Living with this disease has gotten to the point where I can no longer like ignore the fact that I have it. Before when I first was diagnosed, you know, it was really easy for me to, you know, not necessarily pay attention to it. And the reason why I was able to do that was because I was young. I did not care. I didn't want to think about it. I was very, you know, outgoing i didn't want anything to stop my life i was like you know i don't have cancer i can still you know do a lot but yo i swear every time i get to this part it gets really emotional for me because it really is that hard but once i started to live with it like the first thing was the weight gain i gained like 60 pounds in a month bro yeah that was hard for me my ex was very insensitive about it like I started to gain weight, like really, like a lot of weight. You can see the stretch marks on my arm. I have stretch marks on my stomach. Like I had to get over that. Um, but my ex used to like hide my food and tell me like, oh, you don't need to be eating that. And he may feel like he had good intentions, but that messed with me psychologically to this day. We're gonna get to that. But the symptoms that they mentioned, you know, like fatigue, rashes, joint pains, I experienced those like 100%. The joint pains are the worst because it literally feels like you got hit by a truck. I wake up, my kidneys are hurting, hurting like so bad to the point that I just curl up in a ball and I don't move from that spot until it subsides. And sometimes it doesn't go away, you know, um... I think what makes it really hard for me is that no one talks about it with me. I feel like everybody just acts like it doesn't exist. Just how I do. I think it's just easier not to think about it. Maybe that's why my mom doesn't really talk about it. But once I turned 18, it was like my mom just stopped 
um taking me to my appointments like it was like it was all on me and you know that was a lot of pressure for such a young girl so i ended up you know picking and choosing which appointments i could actually attend because now i'm in school full-time i'm working full-time and now i have to make these appointments that are not easy to make because for the simple fact that my professor last semester gave me an f because i missed four days and it's like bro i told you my disease i told you i'm sleeping at school because i work overnight and i'm coming straight from there to school and i'm sleeping i'm studying for your class and he knew how hard i was working and you know I was really hurt when I received that F. It was like, it was like a slap in the face. It made me feel like everything was my fault. Like this disease, like, I just was so hurt. I was just like, it's my fault. I deserve this, like, but then I told myself, ain't no way I deserve that F. Like, so we have a grade appeal committee. When they ask for like evidence that I actually did do the work, I handed it to them. They're still giving me issues, bro. This was last year around August. I was supposed to have been find out like the decision but i told them like listen i will take legal actions against you guys if this is not corrected because i know i didn't deserve this and not only that like you're punishing me you're giving me a feeling grade because i was not able to make it to class because i physically couldn't like that is it just makes me mad to think about it I know I don't deserve no special treatments, but I'm gonna be honest with you. This is why a lot of people don't go to college. And I was never that type of person to tell myself I can't do what somebody else could do. Cause anything you could do, I could do better. Nothing's gonna stop me. I don't let nothing stop me. Like, but when you physically cannot move, there's nothing you could do about that. It's like what it's like living with lupus. I lost jobs because of it. when I used to apply to jobs, you know how they give you that option like, oh, do you have a disability? I will not check it off. I was afraid that they would discriminate against me and not hire me. One place that I felt did that was Chipotle. Chipotle definitely like they did me grimy. I was so sick. Like when I tell you, when I get sick, I get sick because I have an autoimmune disease. I got sick once. I felt I had to go in and show that I was sick. So when I went in, I told my boss, like, listen, I got a stuffy nose, a cough, and a sore throat. He was like, well, do you got a fever? And I'm looking at him like, is that the only thing that concerns you is if I have a fever? I'm coughing, I'm sneezing. <laughs> Like, does that not matter to you that I'm around food? He was like, oh, you can still work. So long story short, I ended up working, but I felt uncomfortable working while I kept coughing. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to call the supervisor. I'm going to let him know, and I'm going to go home. Literally, the next day, I was told I don't have a job. So Chipotle is off my list. Um, I've dealt with a lot of other jobs that I felt like they did me real grimy, but I'm not going to bring it up because, you know, it's always two sides to a story, but Chipotle, there's no fucking two sides. They did me grimy. I felt like they knew what they were doing from the jump, but that's cool. But living with lupus, it comes with those type of things. People who di discriminate against you. People who tell you, oh, you look like you don't have no disease. Um, Do you need to see something growing on my face or on my body to believe that I'm, I have a disease? A lot of people be like, oh, you don't look like you have anything. Oh, you look like nothing's wrong with you. Thank you. I, I kind of figured. They be like, oh, it doesn't look like anything's wrong with you. Like, sometimes I be like, what does that mean? I'm not gonna lie, like, I try not to let it get to me, but it truly, truly does. I just want to show you guys something. So I have my little pill case that my friend had bought me. I don't know why I'm doing that, like, as if it's gonna really show. It says my pills, actually. He bought me this because I would always forget in the morning to take my medication and, you know, I was grateful for this thing because it's cute. I can carry it with me. No one knows what it is. Not that I care, but I was happy. So basically, I'll show you what I take in the morning because I have to take some now. So this is what I have. Well, this is what I take now. When I first was diagnosed, it was a lot more. I was taking three of these big pills. I was taking one more pill. But because, you know, as time went on, I was able to, they were able to lean me off. So every morning and night, this is what I take. Sometimes I don't. I'm, gonna be, I'm not going to take this right right now because I don't have water and I prefer to take it with water and not soda or juice. I have it for every day of the week. I usually take my the night doses here and I just keep my morning dose in here. So whenever I'm on the go and I'm in a rush, this is the perfect thing. This is my holy grail. First was diagnosed with lupus. Like I told you, I was 
devastated like i was just matter of fact my, i was not devastated i was just happy to be going home i'm like finally it was a day before thanksgiving and you know i was just happy to be able to go home and cook with my family i was just happy i was in the hospital for like a week and i was just like oh my god it felt like months i need to go I felt like i was losing my mind so when i finally got home you know I started to cook with my mom and my boyfriend at the time and I was just grateful to be home. Nothing could have taken away that joy besides the reality that hit me later on. Like I said, I gained a massive amount of weight. And when I say massive, girl, 60 pounds is a lot, okay? So I gained 60 pounds. Um, it was all water weight. So basically, it was like if you press your hand into my leg and you let it go your handprint will still be in my you know every time i do this to like demonstrate to someone i could feel like in my skin the indentation of so basically the water i don't know why it does that but the water weight inside your body when you press on it for some reason it molds and it shapes i don't know why but it's more in my ankles than it is in my arms um because when you stand up all the everything just goes down because of gravity so it's mostly in my legs lupus lupus messes with your appetite i tell you no lie i probably eat no not probably i eat once a day like, i don't eat every day but when I do eat, it's once a day and it's every other day. You start eating when I really get this painful hunger in my stomach that I need to eat. I don't like to eat. I don't get an appetite anymore. I think partially is because of like when my ex used to hide my food, like that mentally messed with me. But not only that, like I just don't have an appetite. And you know, it's part of my disease. Like you lose your appetite. It really does suck for me because over time that does affect your body. Like if you don't eat, your body goes into like starvation mode and no matter what like it always thinks it's starving so for an example i could be sleeping and i will wake up like oh my god my stomach is hurting and it's because i didn't eat you know, i think what happens is i keep telling myself okay i'm gonna eat i'm gonna eat i'm gonna eat and i never do like i don't find anything to be good anymore so i think that's another reason mm -hmm. but I i've tried talking to my doctors about it i tell you no lie People act like this disease is just, you know, an ordinary disease, but it, it's not. Just because you can't see it on me does not mean it doesn't exist. Because someone doesn't look like they suffer from something doesn't mean they're not struggling with something. I'm sure I need to be on my way to class by now to my clothes and head out, um, but I will see you later.